Okay, welcome everybody. Um, we'll get started here in just a couple seconds. A uh, few house cleaning items. Um, first, just wanted to thank everybody for attending our webinar today. Um, we're going to talk about um, kind of some new things in uh, Trimble Access 2018. Uh, this was released, I think, back around in April when Trimble announced the uh, TSC7. Um, it's a pretty major overhaul of the layout of Trimble Access, um, which we've kind of been accustomed to for years. Um, the purpose of this is to kind of give everybody a walkthrough of the uh, software changes and some of the new additions. Um, and, it, and a lot of people have kind of held off on this update to the end of kind of the construction season. So we wanted to kind of get out ahead of that and just give everybody an overview of, of how this new uh, layout works. Um, I'm going to uh, moderate today. I'll introduce myself. Uh, my name is Jay Haskamp. I work out of the uh, St. Cloud, Minnesota office. Um, I'm going to kind of introduce the guys here in a minute, and I will also monitor uh, questions in the background. So um, everybody's kind of muted. That's kind of how these webinars work. But if you have questions that you want to go through as we, as we uh, progress here, you should see a questions box on your on your go to meeting control panel uh, feel free to type any questions in there and i'll monitor those as we go and reply back and we'll save some time at the end also uh, for some q a uh, but our our presenters today are dylan jones he's one of our ages out of our maple grove uh, minnesota office and he covers the southern minnesota and south dakota regions of our territory uh, another presenter is tony edelbrock He's another AGE with us, uh, joining us uh, not too long ago, and he's with me here in the St. Cloud, Minnesota office, and he's responsible for northern Minnesota and North Dakota. And last but certainly not least, we have Andrew Munson, who's been with us for quite a while as well, and he is in our Arvada, Colorado office, which is in the Denver area, and he covers Colorado, Wyoming, and Montana. Our agenda for today, um, what we're going to discuss here, is we're going to go over uh, the process for upgrading to version 2018 using Trimble Installation Manager and what's involved there. We will also uh, talk about the procedures for creating new projects and jobs in Access 2018. There's a little uh, little different kind of kind of way that. Trimble's handling uh, projects and jobs instead of uh, user uh, logins or user folders. We'll also go through some of the basic uh, software navigation, some of the enhancements, and a, and a demo, um, live demo of the software. And then also we will dive into using Trimble Sync Manager um, to get data um, to the office and the field. This is kind of like the Access Sync uh, 2.0. Those of you who have tried to do that uh, wireless Access Sync synchronization. Um, we've got a new platform that this runs off of now and it's a lot more user friendly and a lot more efficient. So we'll also go through that as well. And then at the end, if we have uh, time, we'll go through some uh, Q&A for everybody. All right. And I said this earlier, uh, but if you have questions, uh, please type them into the questions panel under the GoToMeeting uh, little toolbar there. And we'll save about 10 minutes or so depending upon time. Uh, to go through the questions at the end. And with that said, I'm going to turn it over to Tony, who's going to start us off. Hey, thanks, Jay. Uh, again, uh, thanks, everyone, for taking the time today to, to join us to go over this uh, short little demonstration uh, with Triple Access uh, 2018. Um, I suppose I should put my screen up here. Here we go. Hopefully, everybody can see that. Um, so what I did is I just got some uh, release, release notes, uh, the 2018.10, which just came out probably uh, maybe a month or so ago. Um, I just put down some uh, um, key points here with the, the, new, the new version. Uh, with the release of the R10 Model 2, um, which just came out not, not that long ago either, um, uh, you will need Access version 2018.1 to run the the R8 or R10, excuse me, R10 2. Um, and as, as some of you might know, if you're running uh, version 2017, and you have a few different uh, controllers, you know, within your organization, um, 
See, one, one controller is at a 2017.1, and the other is at a 2017.2. You will get this uh, error message if you try to uh, copy jobs into different controllers with uh, different versions. So the nice thing about this is that uh, 2018.1, uh, you can, uh, it'll automatically update, update your access uh, projects. You can see here, um, you won't have to convert your jobs anymore. Uh, it will automatically do that for you. Uh, Trimble Access, uh, there's a trade-in program, which is kind of a nice feature. Uh, you can now uh, trade in uh, your access, if you're, as long as you're current, you can trade it in um, to get uh, the new the new versions. Um, biggest thing there uh, is it uh, allow you to, as long as you update with your maintenance, uh, you can transfer your, your access over to 2018. Um, which will result in uh, significant cost savings and encourages others to users to stay up to date with their maintenance agreement. Um, so when you get your controller, uh, how to update that, you'll run a Trimble Installation Manager, which is already downloaded and, and operational on your TSE 7 or T10. To do that, you just open up Tim, uh, and here on the pull down, you will see your your versions, uh, your releases, uh, yeah, obviously 18.1 is the newest. You just select which version you want and just click install. Uh, it's pretty painless. Um, and then we'll upgrade, upgrade your access on your controller to the to the newest version. Um, get rid of that. So when you get, uh, get that up and running, here's a folder structure here that's a little bit different, uh, 2017. Most of you know uh, is your Trimble data folder where it stores your jobs. In 2018, uh, there adds another a layer, I guess, of, of organization, uh, a projects folder. This is where your jobs are gonna be stored now. So just as an FYI, uh, it does add another layer uh, of organization to get into your jobs folder. Um, just one thing to, uh, to take note of. Um, one thing I do like to do uh, when I'm setting these up is just put a uh, close that. just put a quick link on your home page here. Uh, to do that, all you have to do is copy your file folder path here. And anywhere on your home screen, just right click, new shortcut and paste that link in. Next, and finish. And here you can see there's a triple access folder. Uh, just a quick link to get right to your job so you don't have to navigate. Um, the uh, Windows 10 format, they do uh, have the folder structure as a hidden folder. So what you'll need to do, what I like to do is go, just go into the, find your hidden folders. There's a little selection icon here where don't show or show. You'll need to show that to see your um, program data folder. If I go up to here. As you can see, the, uh, the folder is a little lighter uh, than the rest of them. So if I don't show that, you could don't show, apply, it disappears. So a lot of people have called in and asked for where's, I can't find my jobs, I can't find my folders. Uh, with the Windows 10, you'll will need to show these. I think that will show your program data, Trimble, and then your. Uh, in my case, it's the emulator, and you'll find your Trimble data folder in your jobs. So just a, a housekeeping clean, a housekeeping item, I guess you could say, just to, to for your organization to to find your projects. Um, so we'll get get in access here. Uh, this is a, a brand new project, basically. Uh, 2018 is going to make you create a project before you can start any job, any, any sort of surveying. Uh, this is uh, the main page that you all see as soon as you uh, upgrade to 2018. Here's a Trimble Connect. Uh, you'll need a username and login. Uh, I believe Dylan's gonna go over that a little bit later for uh, using that, that functionality. And up here, these three horizontal lines is what uh, uh, Trimble is calling uh, the hamburger icon. This is gonna be your main navigational tool. Uh, you can see there's uh, your projects folder. When we create a job, uh, this will populate a little bit more. But uh, one thing with the Windows 10 uh, setup, 
uh, Bluetoothing uh, your controllers is going to be a little bit different. Um, open up access, you can click on your settings, and this will look pretty familiar uh, to most of you. With the 2017, that would be under your general access uh, tabs. Uh, so here we just go to connections and Bluetooth. I don't have anything in here at the moment, but if you just go to config, add a Bluetooth device, add Bluetooth. Let's take a second out. Oh, there it is. I do have an R10 on already. So what's going to happen is you can connect, uh, but Windows 10 is going to ask you for a PIN number for the Trimble uh, R10. Uh, everything that Trimble has out there that I've seen anyway has been uh, four zeros. That's going to be the kind of the kind of the universal password for that. Just click connect, and you are Bluetooth with your receiver. And there it is. Can accept that. So, like I said, I mentioned before, uh, you'll need to create a project. Project name you will have to fill out. Um, these other, uh, you know, description, reference, location, image, you, you don't have to put in. You're more than welcome to if you if you want to. Um, if you have a few different crews running, uh, it might be it might be a useful tool for you. So for now, the only thing we need is a name. Let's click Enter and Create. And here we get to the new. This is our our new job. Uh, name your job. And this is this looks pretty familiar with uh, any other job creation that was at any other previous Access accounts. Uh, rather than the page down button you might see on the right. Uh, it's now it's just a scroll, so no more page down. So I'll just set up uh, my coordinate system here. Being in Minnesota, Stearns County, just to get us close. Big coordinate project height. I uh, just want to get a rough a rough height. Distance, uh, we want to see everything in, in survey feed. And again, no page, do no page down button anymore. It's just a, a scroll. Accept that. For Minnesota, you need to have the sea level off if you're G using the GNSS grid. It looks good, except that. So now that we have our, our job created, um, you can notice the, the layout is a little different. All of our uh, toolbars are, are up on the right, or, or sorry, excuse me, up on the top. You know, 17, uh, everything was on the, on the right there. Um, so the status bars are here. Um, again, for your antenna, you can always set. Uh, same functionality as, as, as uh, 2017. Tap on your receiver head, you get your end survey power down, Bluetooth, etc. Just a different location. Um, your auto connect options, uh, battery. Um, here is the uh, application button. It's a quick way to switch in and out between your general survey, roads, tunnels, uh, mines if you're using that. Uh, but for us, anyway, mostly it's uh, general survey and roads. Again, uh, hamburger button, your uh, basic navigation tool. You do have your pan, select, zoom in, zoom out, orbit. Um, the show button here gives you your settings if you want to see names, codes, elevations, uh, basically whatever you want to see on the screen, uh, you can select there. Scans if you have an SX10 or S7, uh, any sort of scan data, we'll show it here. Filter uh, if you want to, you know, check on and off your GNSS points or you know, ask take points, you can do that as well. Your active map, that's going to be where you add uh, like your DXF file, shape file, uh, any sort of images, uh, JPEGs. You'll add those here. So it's basically. Um, Basically, just a different layout. Uh, the functionality is all still the same. It's just going to be finding uh, what you guys use most often. I'll go to the hamburger bar here. Uh, to go back, you can click on our job. And on the bottom, here's where our import, export, properties tabs are. Um, it's, again, same functionality, just a different location. 
you don't need to import any you know, CSV or uh, export CSV, um, a few different uh, file structure, obviously, where you want to put it. Open that back up. So I have it. Oops. No survey. Measure points. I'll just get a, my emulator going here. Oh, and it's connected to my Bluetooth. Auto connect, same as in 2017. Well, it's still looking for my R10. All right, so we'll just go into our, our burger bar, our, our functionality here. Um, here's you, you can find, like I said, your, your job data. This is where you can edit your favorites. Um, again, general survey, application button, uh, same, same process, roads, general survey. And again, uh, this looks pretty familiar. Um, again, uh, just in a different view. You can you know, your key in, Kogo, measure, stakeout, uh, instrument settings. Uh, basically, uh, same thing as what it was in, in previous versions, uh, just, just a little different layout. Um, your job data is going to be your file explorer, uh, map, QC graph, point manager. Key in functionality, points, lines, Kogo. Again, uh, all the same is, is what it was. Uh, in previous versions. Hey, Tony, we have a question here. What if you wanted to add a favorite, such as like, if I use key in point a lot, how can I add that to a list of favorites? Well, what you'll need to do is in your favorites here, there's a little pencil that is uh, your edit your favorites map, edit your favorites. Um, you could do this either with your T10 or with your TSC7. So on your power up button, yes. So when you get your, your uh, controller, these six are going to come standard. Uh, this is what uh, it's going to come right, right out the gate. You can, by all means, delete these. You can keep them if you'd like. For now, I'll just, I'm just going to delete all. So in your favorites, you see, notice there's a yellow star here. And if you want to add, say, like uh, Dylan said, uh, Kogo, so you use inverse a lot. There's a star here. You'll click on that, and you can either add it, add it either as a favorite, function, or both. With the T10, uh, obviously it's just going to be favorite. With the TSC7, there are 12 function keys that are on the TSC7. Um, obviously with the TSC7, you'll, you'll be able to use both. Um, so I say I want to add that as a favorite. Actually, we'll, we'll do both. So when you do that, you get 12, I said, 12 functions with your uh, TSC7. You can select any function key you want, but for now we'll just so compute universe in field one. Tap OK. Click your burger, and here you see it's, I have it as a favorite and as a function. Um, this pencil, you can also default and just restore the, the defaults. So um, you can have the 12, like I said, 12 functional keys with TC7. I did, uh, I, I was just curious, I wanted to see how many favorites I could add in, and I got up to 25, and all it did was it just kept adding them in, and I could just pan down. And, and go through. I don't know if you would ever need 25 favorites by any means, but the uh, functionality is there to add add quite a few. Um, you could say I'll add just a few more here just for, oh, I'll just keep in a cool and favorite. Here are your calculations. Oops. So also on the right hand side, you see this is uh, uh, your, I guess uh, would be your switch to button in in 17. With all these uh, programs I have open, I can switch back to map easily. I can switch to azimuth easily. Um, whatever you have open, uh, that's what you can just navigate to uh, real quickly. Much like uh, in 17, with the like, uh, well even older versions with the, the switch to tab on the right hand side. Um, also, in your project tab uh, is your properties. You can edit, here's where you can also edit your project. Even if you need to rename at any time, you can do that. Uh, 
and then one nice function that, uh, well, it, it was in 2017, but the, uh, the help button. If you have a question with, uh, say you need, uh, you're not sure how to stake out a point. Let's see if I can get this started yet. Still looking for that. So, say you had a question with measure. Ah, it's not going to let me do anything now. Let me just exit out of this. I'll go back into it. But with the help button, all you have to do is, is navigate to the the uh, function that you're looking to grab. Open up your hit your burger button and go to help, and it will automatically bring you right to the the help area that you're looking to grab. Still. All right. So if you manage, Could you also um, just go in there and, and manually search for a topic, even? Yeah. Uh, let's see. So say you were unsure of you know, how to compute an azimuth. You can go to your burger button, go to help, and it brings it up over the screen here. And it goes through a process in describing how to compute an azimuth. Uh, it does work for uh, all the functions, uh, you know, if you stake out, if you want to stake out to a DTM, um, any any function that uh, Access has, uh, it's a really, uh, it's a really neat tool. Uh, you do not need to be connected to the internet for this to pop up, it all is all preloaded into uh, Access itself. So um, just be aware that that is a, a very useful tool. Uh, it actually gets used quite a bit. And that was, I think, the last thing I had. Um, sorry, my <laughs> survey style kind of got messed up there with my uh, R10, which isn't even on. But uh, I think everybody kind of gets the, the gist. Uh, it's very similar to 2017. The, the functionality is all, is all still the same. Um, and I know that uh, Trimble does have a, a video out there on, on their website with uh, Access uh, 2018 as well. So. Uh, that, that's all I have for you guys. Thanks. Um, hopefully you will pick something up. Sorry, everything wasn't working the way it was supposed to. But uh, with that, I'll just uh, pass it on over to Andrew. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, is everybody able to see my screen here? Yep, we can see it. All right. So uh, thanks, Tony. Again, my name is Andrew. I am uh, working out of our Arvada, Colorado office. So there's a good chance I work with a, a couple of you now in the support side. Um, so Tony was going to cover a lot of the kind of just Trimble Access general survey tools and kind of show you where those are all at. Um, I think the, the point that we're really trying to make here with this 2018 webinar that we're going over here is that there's no reason to be hesitant to move on to Access 2018. It is a whole new layout. Everything looks a little bit different, but for those of you that have been using Trimble Access for a long time, the tools have the same names. Everything works the same way. It's just kind of reorganized in a new way. So it, it takes a little bit to get used to it, but um, I took about 15 minutes one day, and, and in those 15 minutes, you're able to get a pretty good handle on where everything's at. Um, so don't, don't be hesitant of it. And again, if there is ever any questions on what's going on in Access 2018, we're always here to help you guys out and make sure that you guys are, are headed down the right path with uh, using Access 2018. Um, so what I'm going to do here now is kind of just show you some of the functions specifically related to your total stations. Um, and right now I am hooked up to an SX10 here in my office. Up at the top of the screen here, we do have that burger menu that Tony was talking about. And so if I open that up, that gives me a list of all of the tools that I saw when I was in Access 2017. So for me to work in General Survey, it's always going to open up to General Survey first. And then like Tony mentioned, all those tools that we had before are still listed down here on our screen over on the left side. Also with this total station hooked up up here on the top, I have my 100% battery level shown up on the top. That is the battery level to my TSC7. And then right beside that is the battery level of my total station. If I were to click on that, it's going to give, give me a little bit more detailed description of what's going on. Um, so you can always know how much battery you have left and what's when we need to start thinking about maybe changing those batteries out. Right beside my battery level, I do have a picture of my total station. And if you guys noticed, when Tony clicked on that button in the same spot, it took him to what was called GNSS functions. 
when I click on it, when I'm hooked up to a total station, it takes me to a screen that's called instrument functions. And instrument functions is the exact same as the instrument functions list inside of that TSC three or tablet you were using before that had Trimble Access 2017 on it. So again, everything looks exactly the same. The tools are named the same. So if I wanted to go in and look at the video for my SX10 here, I can tap on video and I still have all the same tools that I have before. Over on the left side of my screen, I do have some zoom in and zoom out buttons over here. So using some of these tools, I can use that telescope and zoom in on whatever target I was looking at trying to get to. Below our zoom buttons, we do have a little camera icon. It's going to let us take a picture of what the total station is looking at. We'll just cancel out of that. Below that, we do have some camera options. So if you wanted to change how your camera looks when you're looking through the T or through the SX10, we can change the image a little bit. And then lastly, just like Tony was looking at, we do have a settings button here as well. Um, if I go back into that instrument menu, a lot of the tools that people are used to using from that instrument tool is going to be that joystick button. That is going to look the exact same as it did in 2017. The only difference here is if you're coming from a TSC3 to one of these TSC7s or T10s is this does support what's called split screen. So we're able to see exactly what the total station is seeing and we're able to also use that joystick. So we always have an idea of what is going on within the system here. Um, if you guys were used to using it before, it's not going to be any different for you guys here inside of Access 2018. Also in the instrument menu, we do have our turn to button. So if you guys had a point that you needed to try to look for, that's still going to be there. Our auto lock tool is still here. Our search function is all still loaded here. So everything that you guys were used to using is still here. They just refresh the look of it a little bit. Outside of those instrument functions, one of the other cool tools that is now here inside of uh, Access 2018 is our target selection tool. This does look a little bit different than what we had in Access 2017. But this does still allow us to add as many prisms into our data collector as we'd like to. So I've got mine set up here with four different targets based on what I'm doing that day. And I can quickly just switch back and forth between those targets just by tapping on one of those prisms that I have set up. If I wanted to go in and actually add a new prism to my list here, I can just tap on my icon at the top of the screen. Down at the bottom of the page, there's an add button. There is also a plus button over on the right side of the screen that lets us add a prism as well. I can then come in, add my target. I can select my prism from a drop down. This is the same options that were available to us before. And I can then choose to name that prism if I'd like to as well. So we'll just call this webinar for today. And as soon as I save that, I now have an extra prism listed here that I can now select at any time and change how I'm going to be or finishing my survey out here. So again, tools are all still the same. Everything that we need to use is still going to be found here on our screen. Um, we do have some uh, horizontal angles and vertical angles shown in the top right that has moved positions. It just went from the bottom of our screen up into the top right corner of our screen now. Um, in that instrument menu, this is where a lot of us would find some of the other functions in the TSC3s or tablets that we had before. We still have all the same tools there. So one of the most important tools in here is going to be that adjust tool. This is where we come in to do our field calibrations for our total stations. So we don't have to worry about not being able to find that stuff. Everything is in the exact same location. Um, if we wanted to get into our target controls and change how our total station is looking for our prism, the same tools are there. So we can quickly go into our instrument tool. And then lastly, just to, to show you guys that this is still going to be a very familiar workflow, we'll go through a real quick station setup here uh, in our project. Um, so I just went into my hamburger menu over there in the top right, went to my measure button. I have a survey style in here for my SX10, and then I can go to station setup. Again, this is the same workflow you guys were used to using before. Uh, because I'm connected to an SX10 here, I do get a picture of what the plummet camera is looking at. So if we were set up over top of a control point, we'd be able to see our control point here. Uh, we can also choose to take a picture of that control point using that SX10. So we got another documentation tool here as well. Once that's set up, it takes us right into that correction screen that we were seeing before. So we'll get that set up. Everything else is going to run just like we're used to. So I can put in my instrument point name, put in that instrument height. For those of you that are setting up your total station using true height, that option is still there. There's also the bottom and notch method in the exact same spot it was. So we'll click accept. 
Backsite still works the same way. So if I can't remember what my point was, I still have my list option here. So I can tap on my backside point. Uh, up in the top here, it says that I am set up using my DR function. So I'm gonna stay using DR for my point. Use some of my camera options here, zoom into the center of my target and hit measure. Once that's done, it's gonna take us again through that same routine that we were used to seeing. Setup completed. Total station is gonna tell us that the station setup is done and it's gonna take us right back to the main page of general survey. Uh, the big difference between general survey here in 2018 is we always have this map available to us. So when I start going into tools and I wanna start measuring points, I'm gonna get the option to either look at my camera view that the total station is looking at. I can also tap a button over here on the left side of my page. It looks like a little map icon and I can choose to see my map at the same time. So the split screen view is really going to make it easy for you guys to have an overall idea of where we're at in, in real time, where we're at in space. Will it be able to see where our other points are located at? Um, the, the camera view is really nice on 2018 because we also get to see where our points actually lay out. So I've got point 10 and point 30 saved there. If I wanted to measure a new point over here and I measure it, I'm going to be able to see exactly what I measured and where I measured from this camera view. So it's, it's really easy for us to get back into those tools and continue using them. For those of you guys that were used to using the check backside tool, we still have that option down here at the bottom of our screen. We can tap the check button, click check backside, and just measure it at any time in our survey. So don't be nervous that those tools aren't going to be there. Everything is still there for us to use. Observation stored. So the station setup is easy to use. For those of you that were using your scanning tools with the SX-10, we still have all the scanning options right from our measure tool. Uh, it's, it's in the exact same spot as before. It's just right there for us to click on and open up and we can start all of our survey right from here. Um, one of the other really cool advantages of moving up to a new version of Access and a new version of a data collector is these new data collectors are running a lot faster. So if I were to switch over to my roads program, and go to a project here that actually has a road in it. I can go in and I can look at my road and I can generate some maps very quickly using that roads program. Uh, the reports here inside of 2018 are going to generate very quickly. So if I were to go to look at my road here, I can always come back and review this road having this map view available to me lets me go back through and look at all of the different stations on my road view as well. I can also go into what's called a 3D drive here inside of my data collector and cruise through and actually see how my road is going to lay out um, in space. And I can see any other points that I've surveyed around here as well. So I always know where I'm at in space. I can see where everything is going to fall and it's a very easy tool to use. One of the tools that, uh, Tony had mentioned earlier was our settings over here. Um, we can go in and we can turn some of this other stuff off inside of here. Sorry about that. So if I didn't want to have to see all the scan data in the background, I can turn all that off. And I'm left now with only my road view and the data that I had surveyed in, in, uh, in this project here. So again, it's a very similar, very familiar workflow. Um, we're here to help you guys out. If there's any questions you guys have on this, feel free to give us a call and let us know. Um, but but the, the main takeaway from this is don't be afraid of Access 2018. This is a, a great program to use. It's been working really well for us. Um, so we wanna help you guys get onto that version of Trimble Access. Say, hey, Andrew, this is Jay. We had a question come in that asked um, in, in previous versions of Access, um, with the map screen being in, in 2D, um, and if now we can look at the map screen and display it in the 3D and rotate the data around? Sure, that's actually one of the other cool tools here that's been added to, it was actually in our tablet versions of Trimble Access before, but now moving to 2018 being on a T10 and a TSC7, they're all gonna support this function moving forward. So over on the left side of our screen, we've got some map commands over here. Right below our zoom functions here, there's a little button that looks a little bit like an atom. That lets us use um, our pinch commands to zoom in and zoom out. It also lets us start turning this map in 3D so we can actually zoom around, we can 
pivot this, put it on its side, so we can look at how this road is going to lay out um, next to the rest of our data. Once you go into that view, there is some preset views in that we can use as well. So if you need to get back to just that top 2D view again, we don't want to be moving our map around like this. We can tap that little uh, cube down there and then tap our plan view and we're right back to where we were at before. There's also some preset views loaded into here as well. So if I wanted to see this data from the front side, I can click front and it's going to rotate the whole data set for us. Um, so take advantage of those preset views. They're really quick and easy to use. Any other questions on the total station side or, or Trimble access side? Uh, I don't see anything right now. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, well, thank you guys at that. Then I will pass this back over to Dylan and let Dylan start uh, showing us a little bit more. Dylan, are you there? Sorry about that. I was on mute. Um, so yeah, Thank we're going to switch gears now and and talk a little bit about Trimble Sync Manager and how that integrates with your field to finish workflow. Um, I will note that there's going to be a Trimble Power Hour in two days on the 26th um, regarding the Trimble Sync Manager, um, taking your data from Trimble Business Center and bringing it into uh, the field using this exact program. Um, so giving you a little bit of a uh, a preview here today. Um, what I want to do is start with getting in, getting everyone up to speed with what this is and why you would consider using it. Um, so most users nowadays have internet access either in the field or at least before heading into the field and after. Um, so modern, with the modern controllers such as the TSC7 and T10, um, they're much different in the in the way that you transfer data compared to um, some of the older controllers um, that run Mo Windows Mobile Device Center or Windows Mobile Controllers is kind of what I'm getting at here. So um, rather than using a flash drive or a cabled connection, um, we've, we also have other options for transferring data. And one of those is Trimble Sync Manager. Um, what, what I'm gonna show you here is a really simplified workflow to take your data from, um, and you can cut out the Trimble Business Center end of things and just use a folder on your computer, send the, the files within that folder to the controller and then up, upload them back to um, your PC so that the office person and the field person are all connected through um, a synchronization process here. So what I'm gonna do next um, is just kind of show you how to get started with Sync Manager. So the first step is to create a Trimble identification login. Um, if you're unsure of how to do that, uh, you can ask your Trimble dealer or ask one of your frontier offices um, for some help in doing that. Um, then you're going to go out and download and install Trimble Sync Manager. And I, I'll note here that you can install that on any uh, Windows PC um, as well as a TSC7 or T10. Okay, so you can actually have Sync Manager right on your data collector in the field. Um, and uh, from there, you're, you're going to create projects. Uh, Tony kind of went into um, needing a project and then within the project is where you're you're going to be creating your jobs. And the jobs can also be created in the field locally on the data collector as well and then up, uh, uploaded from there as long as it's part of a, um, a cloud project. And then number five, we're going to download the project on the data collector and all any additional linked files or background um, background uh, files are going to download automatically as well. And then from there, we're gonna start serving. So I'm gonna to try to demonstrate this with as little time as I have right now. Um, again, there is that power hour coming up in a couple of days if I am not able to get to everything. But where I'm gonna start here is in Trimble Sync Manager. Okay, so you can see I'm uh, logged in um, under my email address up in the top right. Uh, this is through my Trimble ID. And then I can see my dashboard of all my projects um, under my username. In the top left, I have a new button to create a new project. I can go in and edit any of these existing projects or look at what jobs are found within that project. Um, but what I wanna do here first 
is actually take you into Trimble Business Center where I have some control points and some existing line work. Um, this is really cool with uh, some of the latest um, updates to Trimble Business Centers. You can send this data directly to uh, Trimble Sync Manager and provide that into a job or project. So I'm gonna make my selection of, of my data here. I'm going to click the Send to Sync button. And I will note that you need to have Sync Manager open at this moment. So I have that open in the background. I can see um, all the data selected here and I can select uh, whether I want those points to be embedded in the job. So either they're imported to the job or they can be a linked file or um, active map file as a DXF or CSV. So you have some, um, some options there. The line work automatically is gonna go out as a DXF. And then if I had a surface, that would be exported as a TTM file. Okay, I'm just going to give this a, a new name. I'll just keep it as webinar project, that sounds good. Add that selection and then I'll hit the send button. Now, in Trimble Sync Manager, it's giving me a message. Do I want to receive these files from Trimble Business Center? I'm gonna hit yes, apply. Um, I'm gonna create a new project here actually first before I do this. So webinar project is what I'll call this project. Create it. So I, for, I forgot a, a step in between there. I wanna have uh, my project um, created before I send that data over from Trimble Business Center. Okay, and then now um, what I see here, as soon as I uh, created that project, um, I have my data. Um, this is going into a create a job uh, menu where I can go ahead and give it a job name, a reference number, description, and then I can also assign um, some people with in my organization to this. So I could sign myself, assign myself to this project, and what would happen is I'd get a to-do um, email um, uh, telling me that, hey, here's the files, um, go out and do this uh, task, um, and I can go out there, download the data, and um, be able to do that task. Okay, so when I uh, was in Trimble, um, Trimble Business Center back here, I sent this selection of data. I've got a DXF and points embedded in job. As soon as I sent that, sent it to Trimble Sync Manager, and now those files are loaded into my, um, my new job here. You can see here under job files, I've got that DXF file. Um, I, I've got all my units that I can set up. I can set this up um, exactly how I want it to be um, set up out in the field. My coordinate system, just need to put in a um, project height there. Uh, all my Kogo settings, my other settings, and then my job points. Uh, since I clarified embed in job, those points that, uh, that I had in my TBC project are going to be embedded or imported into this job. Now the last thing I need to do is go ahead and hit the create button. Okay, so I've got my job created. Um, Cool thing about this, uh, there's there's this little menu button over on the right hand side, kind of small to see, but uh, when I click that, I can save this job as a template. I can also create a new job from this job. Um, so I can just make a copy or create a template and go to town creating uh, all the jobs that I need for this project. I can delete it or um, a little bit later, I'll explain what this close means. All right, so I'm gonna minimize my Trimble Sync Manager and open up. Trimble Access 2018. Um, Tony mentioned that there was this little box here, and this is to sign into your Trimble Connect account. So I'm gonna enter in my credentials here. And go ahead and sign in. Um, if you do not have a Trimble ID, it is very easy to create one. Um, you can create a personal account. Um, there's also a business account. Um, if you have questions or if you want to get your whole business set up with um, Trimble Sync um, on the Trimble Connect platform, let us know and we'll help you out and guide you in the right way to do that. Um, but there is a simple create a new Trimble ID um, button right there to get you going. So I'm going to sign in 
And then now what you see over on the left-hand side here is all those projects that I had uh, listed in Sync Manager. Okay, there's my webinar project. All I need to do, um, actually, and I should note here, under um, this menu on the right-hand side, it shows how many jobs and the name of the jobs within that project. So it's really cool. You can see which jobs are in which project without actually going into the project. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and download this project. You can see that it's going to download um, any associated project files along with that. So my GeoAid file is going to be downloaded. And then now I'm looking at the list of jobs within my project here. Over on the right side, the um, assigned, uh, the assigned member and the linked files associated to this job. Okay, and I can copy, import, or export any data from here, um, but um, I'm going to go ahead and download this job. You can see it's grayed out right now. Um, it's requiring me to download um, the job data and the attached file, and there I've got my control points in my line work um, right from Trimble Business Center synced over to my data collector all wirelessly through the internet. I got about five minutes left. I want to show a couple more things to do with Sync Manager, um, which um, indicates, okay, now I've, I've got my, my existing data. Now I want to maybe shoot some more topo data, stake out some points. Um, I'm going to demonstrate this really quick by just keying in a point. Okay, I'll give it a quick elevation here. Store that point. And then now, if I um, go back into my job um, window, I can, it's now telling me you have the ability to upload this job back to the cloud. Okay, so to upload the job, I'm going to click this menu button in the top right corner and choose upload. So we're sending any, uh, any job changes that we did out in the field back up to the cloud where our office person, whoever that might be, can now come into Sync Manager. Just do a quick little refresh here. You can see that it was modified just a, you know, a few seconds ago or a minute ago. This person can now click on this job and view the job information along with uh, any points um, that were added to the job. You can see I started out with six points. Now I've got seven points. There's that point number seven, Northern Easting Elevation. Um, also, any map files that were uh, linked or attached to this uh, to this job file as well, you can go ahead and click and download those from here. And because I have Trimble Business Center open in the background, I have this import to Trimble Business Center. If I don't have Trimble Business Center open in the background, I would only have this download button. So when I choose download, I can go ahead and select a folder for this job file to download to, and then there I have my job file. I can drag that into whatever third-party application or Trimble Business Center from there. Or um, the other option, again, is to import to Trimble Business Center. I get this little pop-up bubble here. Um, if I go over to Trimble Business Center, it's opened me up to a process view tab. Okay, it's saying field data from Trimble Sync Manager, waiting import of job one. All right. So we've got this communication between Sync Manager and TBC. I'm going to hit import. It's going to import the file. If there's any you know, coordinate system um, differences, you can go ahead and say keep or convert. I'm going to convert to the job file. It's finished with the import. Now in my plan view, I should see that point number seven that I keyed in in the field. So a very streamlined process from going office field back into the office, um, all wirelessly. This can all be done remotely from a field user and an office user just being in co communication and seeing those live uploads um, from the field. Okay, from, uh, and I wanna point out one last thing here uh, before we go into uh, Q&A. And that is within our project, um, again, we just have our, our job files in view, but up in the top right corner, we have a properties button. Okay, this properties um, uh, now list is going to allow us to change um, information. Maybe we need a description and a cu customer reference. Uh, we wanna pan this into exactly where the job, uh, sorry, the project is located. Um, 
that's in the details on the left here. On um, Below that, we have template. We can load in any existing job templates. We can create those job templates, um, add them here. Essentially, um, this is just setting up this project with any um, sort of template that we might need to create jobs in the future. Below uh, template is reference. Now reference is really awesome because you can also send um, maybe non-survey non files to the field user. What I mean by that is maybe we have a PDF or um, just a list of files that we need to send out to the field user. And I'm gonna find that folder that contains those files. So maybe we have a background, a DXF, an alignment, a CSV, a plan a PDF, uh, maybe even a, doc, um, a Word document. We wanna send all those files out to the field user. So I'm going to upload those as additional project data here in my reference tab. And now what I should be able to do is um, access those files. Those will be uh, published to the project, downloadable on the field device. Um, continuing through the rest of this list here though, is that you can download any style sheets. Style sheets are what allow you to export custom reports right on the data collector. Um, you can also generate those reports here in Sync Manager. Um, you can customize these reports if you know how to uh, you know, go into the code of, of the style sheet and everything, and just add those as a custom report here. And then you can also set up your project members. So your, your teammates, whoever that might be, you can invite those users or invite multiple users um, to join you on this project. And you can give them a specific role, which would obviously limit them in what they can do within this project. So I did want to point that out here quick. Um, what I'll do is just create a new job. And then now what you should see in your project files section here are those project reference files that I had just added a second ago. Okay, and they have a little link button which allows the user or the person setting up this job to say, yes, I want to use this file in this job or not. So I've got my background, I've got my PDF and my Word document there. I'm going to create this new job. All right, so the job is created, job number two. Back into Trimble Access. If I, um, I guess if I just refresh this page, it should show job number two right away. Grayed out, that means we need to download the job. And look at that, there's our linked files. We'll go ahead and download. And there's my background, my alignment, my line work, my control points, everything there as an active map. Here's my active map layers. Okay, so those are all linked here into the job. Now to get to that PDF, what I would do is hit my menu button, go to job data, and then file explorer. So those are just going to be files located in your project folder under Trimble Data, Projects, and then whatever you name the project. So here I have um, my document, double click to open up in Word, very simple, and then my PDF, all right there in the field on my TSC7 or T10. All right, so at this moment, I'm going to switch it back over. Uh, we're gonna handle some, some Q&A um and um hopefully answer as many questions as possible in the last 10 minutes or so and then uh from there if you have any additional questions um you can reach us uh we'll display our, our contact information but yeah at this time um let's see what happened or what we have for some questions i'll, I'll uh invite jay to help us out with that yeah dylan it looks like um we had a few uh, come in that, that we kind of answered in the background, but I'll just go through a few of them here. And I, th I think you said you might've had a couple as well. Um, one of the questions was, can we run um, Trimble Installation Manager on the TSC7? Uh, 
So the answer to that is yes, you do. Um, previously, if you had experience with tablets such as the Yuma 2 or even the T10, um, they were Windows-based, and you ran Trimble Installation Manager right on the tablet to whether it was to install or update access. Um, TSC3s and TSC2s, um, we ran it on a computer with the controller plugged in. Um, the TSC7 now is also running a Windows 10 operating system like the tablets are. So with the TSC7, we're no longer connecting it to a computer. We're running Tim right on the TSC7 um, to do any of the access upgrades. Um, the other question that came in, um, we kind of jumped in on that during the talk was the 3D view on the map screen. So just again, to reiterate that, if we have 3D line work or roads, um, things like that, we can do the 3D view with some of the predefined views. Um, there was a follow-up to that, if we can create a profile view. Um, and that I'm not aware of in the map screen. You can use some of the predefined, like front, back, left, and right views. There is a cross-section view if you have roads to view cross sections, but I, I, I have to investigate more unless you guys know differently. I don't believe there's a profile um, view button. Um, that's about it. Um, I think Tony maybe had something, but that's about all I'm seeing here. Hey Jay, did you want to see the profile view in that road screen? If you have it, yeah. Yeah, I've got it pulled up right now actually. Okay, okay, let's go through. We have, we have a little bit of time. Why don't you just show that really quick, Andrew? Sure. Are right, you guys seeing that profile view there now? Cross section view, yes. Great cross section, yeah. So, so yeah, this is that that profile cross section view that we can pull up from our road screen. All I did was select a station from my map view here, and then down in the lower left corner of the screen, that's where I get that profile view where I can then go in and select different strings along this road. It'll give me information about the uh, piece that I have selected on that road. Um, this is gonna work the exact same way whether you're just reviewing the road or if we were actually inside of the survey, we'd get the same options here. So you have the choice to either work from that, that plan view or that cross-section view within your road. Okay, thank you. Um, Dylan, did you have anything else? Um, I think one of the things that um, comes up a lot is, you know, what does it cost to use that sync manager um, to use some of these syncing services that Trimble has? Um, as long as you keep your data collector um, up on maintenance, um, you should be able to use Trimble sync manager on your data collector um, uh, free of cost. Okay, and and what happens is is we can assign um, your data collector to a specific, uh, let's say an admin email address. And that admin email address can then handle, you know, which users that are created from then on within the organization. So um, there's some flexibility there and we get that question about cost of Trimble Connect, cost of using the syncing services. That's kind of the rundown right now um, as far as is what we've been told. So um, please reach out to us if there's any follow-up questions on that. Um, hey Jay, see. this is Steve, can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Yep. So I was gonna just address that question also in regards to the sync manager and licensing. Uh, I know Dylan said and uh, showed online where you can create a Trimble ID uh, but he also encouraged you to uh, work with your individual Trimble representative or, or uh, Frontier representative to get the, the ID. Uh, when we uh, discussed the sync manager access and granted access with the product manager last week before our webinar, one of the things that he had uh, indicated to us is how to properly set customers up uh, using what's called the Trimble Virtual Warehouse, which only we have access to. Um, and if you if you don't uh, if you've created an ID before, you may be limited on what you can do. Uh, maybe just one project. Um, so anybody that wants to have an ID set up, we just encourage you to reach out to uh, your local representative or or, um, or or provide your email, which one gentleman did here in this session today, uh, and we will get you set up properly. Um, 
it's something that we have to do in the back end, but I just wanted to assure you if you've done this in the past, it probably was not set up properly and it has nothing to do with necessarily your maintenance of your equipment. Your maintenance is important uh, if you want to sync a controller up to the sync manager. Uh, maintenance on that controller needs to be up to date. But as far as setting up the organization and giving you the, uh, the maximum of three logins, uh, that has to be done by us, and we can we can now assist you with that. Uh, we didn't have that knowledge prior, but we do have that knowledge now. Awesome. And um, I, I'm just looking through the questions here. Uh, was the question regarding stuck at one project limit answered at any time? Um, I know that there's a one project limit when you're using a personal account. Um, that's the dif that's the difference between a personal account and a business account with uh, with Trimble Connect. So it is important that if you are keeping your data collector uh, up on maintenance um, and 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 if and you want to create multiple projects um, that you do have a business um, type account rather than a personal. I believe there's also a data limit like 10 gig data limit on a personal account. So those are some of the things that um, that create that difference between business and personal. Um, I also have a question here. Um, are certain modules that were um, available in previous versions of Trimble Access, are those still av available with Trimble Access 2018? Um, the answer to that is um, if, if you go into Trimble Installation Manager and you don't see that module, let's say it's the um, pipelines module or utility module, um, maybe the, the Level Me app. Um, some of them are still in beta. So if you are looking to use the beta version, let us know. We can try to get you lined up with that. Um, and uh, it's also possible to preview version 2018 on a machine. Um, let's say you have Let's say you have a Windows 10 computer and you want to test out um, Trimble Access. If you open up T Trimble Installation Manager on your uh, computer, I believe there is a short trial version of uh, version 2018 that's available. Um, again, um, there is a distinguish, um, it's distinguished whether you have the, the proper computer compatible um, um, requirements in order to run Trimble um, Access 2018. Um, and if you need to get a hold of any of the release notes, there is a new, um, there's a new release notes website uh, for Trimble Access. Okay, so if you uh, just simply Google Tr Trimble Access release notes, um, uh, you should be able to find the Trimble Access release notes portal. This is really handy because it shows you all the releases here on the left and you can do a search through multiple releases. Um, so very handy then rather than going out and downloading the release notes for each version. Um, other than that, that, that should answer most of the questions here. If we weren't able to get to all of them, um, we'll be sure to do that um, in another, another way, whether it's email or, or reaching out to you over the phone. Yeah, if you have additional questions, um, you can you can send us questions via email, um, which will actually go to to all of us on this call here from Frontier. Um, it's just survey underscore support. Again, survey underscore support at frontierprecision.com, and, and we'll be happy to help anybody out that has questions we didn't get to. Mm -hmm. And if you need to get a hold of one of our regional offices, here's the phone number for each of our offices. Um, you can also reach us on our website. Um, there's some good information. We'll post this webinar to our website um, under webinars, and uh, uh, you'll be able to view this at um, any time after that. All right, well, we're at time. Um, again, thank you, everybody, for attending today. Um, hopefully, you found this informative, and again, feel free to follow up with us on any questions. And uh, we'll go ahead and end this now. And thanks again. Appreciate it.